Hello and welcome to our weekly devotion where we share this one thing from our revised common lectionary for Sunday, May the 1st. My name is Pam Maston. I'm one of the associate pastors here at First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. And thank you so much for joining me today. So many of you know that I grew up on a farm and we had a wonderful garden. We grew tomatoes, green and yellow beans, sweet corn, onions, cabbage, cauliflower, carrots, potatoes, squash, peas, and of course, everybody in the family had a role in raising the vegetables. At a young age, we learned to weed the garden. In times of drought, we watered the plants. When things were ripe, we got to pick, and of course, the freezing and canning for the winter. And the best was eating the fresh vegetables. Even better than that was the row of strawberries in the garden. We only had a few plants and the season was very short, but every year we looked so forward to strawberries on our cereal, strawberry shortcake, and strawberries and ice cream, my personal favorite. The strawberries usually ripened at the end of June so we started salivating around the beginning of June. We watched the fruit grow into beautiful, red, plump, juicy berries. But one year, they didn't ripen. They were hard and dry, and unfortunately, the berries were beyond picking. I don't know why, perhaps weather-related, but we did not have berries and ice cream that year. Those strawberries were not ripe for the picking, as we like to say. In our passage from Acts chapter 9, Paul, I mean Saul, was not open to change and wasn't interested in Christianity. He was not ripe for the picking. He was the least likely person to change. He was way beyond picking. But what happened to Paul was sudden and unexpected. It happened on the road to Damascus. Saul was actually trying to destroy the mission of the early church, but instead he encountered the living Jesus and became one of his disciples instead. It seems dramatic, doesn't it? And we wonder, does this happen to people today? My own faith journey doesn't include such dramatic moments, but I've often said that I can't remember a time in my life that didn't include God's presence, provision, and protection. Granted, there have been dry seasons when the fruit was not ripe, but I always knew that God was there. Friends, what does your faith journey look like? Your faith journey is unique to you. Our passage today is remarkable, and against all odds, God tapped Saul to lead the early church. Who knew? Paul ended up sharing the good news of the gospel on his three missionary journeys and in his free time, wrote many letters to his new converts. Go Paul. But the real credit goes to God, the main character in this story and every story of transformation, including ours. Do you see what happened? Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and we too meet Jesus on our journeys in life. Saul's conversion was not something he set out to do. It was God's doing. Friends, who of us haven't been on the wrong path or have been closed-minded or stubborn? My mom likes to say that her children were strong-willed. I get it from my mama. But the good news is that God is still in the business of transforming lives. This one thing for today is that we are all in need of continual transformation, becoming more and more like Jesus, transforming our lives into the image of Christ so that we can do and be all that God is dreaming for us to do and be in this world. This week, let's ask ourselves this question. Where is God in the midst of it all? Where is God at work in our lives? on the road, within our souls? Where do we need to open our hearts and minds to see God's grace in and around this place? Are there things in our lives that are leading down the wrong paths? And where do we need the transforming grace of God? 
What happened to Saul, a.k.a. Paul, was sudden and unexpected. But God is still in the business of change. There's no one spiritual experience that fits all. Paul's Damascus Road experience was kind of dramatic and had a significant impact on the church. But friends, God is not done with us on our journeys. Let's keep open to what God is doing in and around us. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Stay healthy, and we'll see you on Sunday.